So here's an example of one of the sutras. It's it's number eleven, uh, and uh, I, you're, for the for the discussion board this week, you can choose any of the sutras you want. So scan through, read through. Uh, if you want to use a good one, you can use eleven. I think it's great, but you can use any sutra that you wish to do this assignment. And I'm going to ask that you read through it first, and then I'm going to ask that you respond in a particularly Buddha follower kind of way. So what's the Diamond Sutra 11? It says, Subhuti, if there was as many Ganges rivers as the number of grains of sand in the Ganges, would you say that the numbers of grains of sand in all these Ganges rivers would be very many? Says the Buddha. Okay, and Subhuti answers, very many indeed, most honored one. If the number of Ganges rivers were that large, how much more so would be the number of grains of sand in all those Ganges rivers. Now, this sounds like a very complex counting or a word problem on the SAT that is being sent out there, which is sort of, if this were as many as this, and this were as many as this. So already you can imagine, um, I don't know, the kind of state of confusion that's being uh, elicited in the disciple as he listens to this complex word problem. And so he then goes on, Subhuti, my student, I will declare a truth to you. Okay, here it comes. If a good man or a good woman filled over 10,000 galaxies of worlds with seven treasures for each grain of sand in all those Ganges rivers and gave it away for the purpose of compassion, charity, and giving alms, would this man or woman not gain great merit and spread much happiness? That would be a lot of charity, alms, and happiness. And Subhuti's student replies, very much so, most honored one having just been exhausted by the seven times multiplication a problem that he had just been given uh, by the Buddha. And then here comes the clincher. Subhuti, my student, if after studying and observing even a single stanza of this sutra, another person were to explain it to others, the happiness and merit that would result from this virtuous act would be far greater. Boom. So there's Sutra 11. After this complex word problem, the Buddha switches it and says, you know what, as great as that would be, teaching somebody the wisdom would be even greater. Ah. Phew, I don't have to be that good at math. I just have to say, wow, somehow teaching is greater than giving material wealth. Hmm, this sounds like something else that we've thought about this week. Hmm, teaching is even greater than material wealth. Where did I hear that? Oh, that sounds like something in Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm, what's going on here? Well, we see a very similar theme articulated by the Jewish scriptures of around of this time. It's also being uh, articulated in Buddhist teaching. Uh, teaching is somehow, wisdom is somehow valued even more than lots and lots and lots and lots of material good. All right. So that's the uh, little Sutra 11. Uh, it's a theme, of course, that I find delicious. I am a teacher. I have chosen as my life's profession and my career to traffic not in stuff, but to traffic in ideas as if I have been taking uh, Proverbs and the Buddha's teachings to heart in the choices that I've made in the way that I've chosen my career and profession. Uh, well, that aside, um, I, which is to say, you shouldn't be surprised at the kinds of things I pick. I, of course, pick things that are consistent with my values, consistent with my interests and my life choices. Everything I'm offering you in this class is being filtered through the filter of Captain Kirk. And whether you applaud that or not, a filter is always there. However fair I might aspire to be, I'm all my fairness too is always uh, my fairness is always tilted or tinted by the sense of core values with which I live my life, as will be your sense of fairness. What is a good book? Who gets to decide what values and what priorities and what privileges are being celebrated and promoted 
with those decisions? These are the questions of this class. So for your discussion board this week, I want you to do the following with one of the, uh, with one of the sutras. I want you to pick one. I've just picked 11. And then I want you to meditate on it. And then I want you to write about it after your experience of meditation. So the way you do that is um, you'll notice I've sat down. I've gotten calm. I'm kind of in my... I'm kind of in my Buddhist medicon. I've got my dirty gray shirt. Didn't shave. Didn't just didn't feel like it's a rainy day out. I just I just didn't feel like, you know, glamming up Captain Kirk professorship today. Uh, it's that time of the semester. So so the 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 first step is to choose the sutra. The next step is to read it out loud a couple. If studying, observing even a single stanza of the sutra, another person will explain it to others. To explain to others is far greater. To explain would be far greater. Explaining is far greater. Explaining is far greater. Better to, to, to teach is far greater. To explain is far greater. So I've kind of boiled it down to two or three words. The idea of it, right? Um, explaining to others is virtuous. Explaining things to others is virtuous. So you can adapt, amend, abbreviate uh, into whatever three or four words that you find to be most useful for you that you're going to hold on to and use for this Buddhist meditation. Then I want you to take a great big deep breath. <sighs> to explain is far greater. To, to teach is to, to explain is far greater. So there's my thing. And then I'm just going to uh, take my hands. I don't know if you can see them. I'm going to lay them down on my legs right here like they're on my knee. I'm sitting square so my feet are square against the ground. I'm in a comfy little office chair. You can do this any chair that you find comfortable. And my hands are straight down on my knees. I'm going to take a deep breath. And then I'm just going to let my eyes close. And I'm just going to repeat the, the couple words in my head is far greater to explain is far greater another big deep breath teach is a greater good to explain is a greater good and now in my mind's eye I'm going to let those few words explaining is the greater good explaining is the greater good explaining I'm going to let those words uh, repeat them in my head gently and slowly, breathing in and breathing out. And if at any moment my mind should wander, wander rather, off of the words, and I realize that I'm thinking about dinner that I'm going to make tonight, that's okay. I'm going to notice that I'm having another thought, and I'm going to bring my mind eye back to those few words. <sighs> Teaching is the greater good. Te explaining is the greater good. And after a few minutes, I could find my, again, my thought wandering off to some other thought. I notice the thought and I just guide my thinking back to the words. I'm using the words of the sutra now as a mantra, as a phrase that I repeat again and again and again, knowing that it is absolutely sure thing that my mind will wander to another thought and that I can gently touch it back to the mantra. So that's the only assignment. And I want you to maybe look at a clock and do that. You're aiming to try to do that for 10 minutes or 15 minutes at the most of just sitting, breathing, letting the mantra float through your thought and bringing your awareness back to the words uh, every time your mind. So that's, that's a kind of a meditation practice. It's not the only way to meditate. But it's one way to meditate when there's a word or a concept that you want to just sit with and mull over. So after you're done, I want you to take a second, take a deep breath and just simply uh, notice how you feel. Take a quick little inventory about how you feel in your head, in your body, uh, how your spirit feels, how your emotions feel. 
Uh, and then I'd like you to take a piece of paper and I'd like you to write nonstop for 10 minutes. You can write about your experience um, uh, meditating, sitting with a sutra, as it, as it might be called, uh, in that sort of quiet, contemplative way. Uh, how was it for you? Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it pleasant? Was it energizing? Was it relaxing? Uh, you can come back to the sutra and then think about writing about the sutra. Uh, is it true? Who does it apply to? How could it manifest in your life? If you thought that, what are the things that you you teach that you to the people? You know, to, teaching a kid to scramble an egg or to put on their socks or to tie their shoes for God's for sake. What are all the things that you find yourself teaching others in all of the different roles that you play or whatever uh, is appropriate to the idea of your sutra? But that's that's kind of what a Buddhist response to reading would be. The Buddhist response to reading is before anything was done would be to try to take in the thought and to sit contemplatively in a meditative practice like the one we just, we just introduced for the first time. So for your discussion board this week, choose a sutra, sit with the sutra in meditation, for 10 minutes and then non-stop write as fast as you can uh, with non-stop writing that you're not worrying about punctuation or the flips and flops of your mind all that counts just time yourself and write a whole page as quickly as you can and for the discussion board you just have to post that page you can take a picture of it if you've done it on with handwriting you can type it over if you want you can uh, if you've done your fluency writing on a keyboard, you can just copy and paste that right into the discussion board. And we'll get to see, we'll get to see all together as a class, people's different experiences of this uh, very novel, very odd kind of uh, reading that would be very, very typical of reading in the period uh, of Buddha's followers as they were trying to take in, as shall we say, take in the teachings of their great master. Okay, see you next time.